cooked up something, a little football osmosis from Aaron Rodgers. Maybe not. We head to Cincy. Browns, Bengals, Baker's first game since the OBJ release, and he was excellent. Looked like a man on a mission. 218 yards, two touchdowns. Eight different Browns caught passes from Baker in this game. Take that, OBJ. Balanced attack led to a balanced blowout. Browns win, big time, 41-16. Baker after the game, cool, calm, and very collected. Adversity hits. Nobody flinched. Uh, it was a long week. I'd be lying if I said otherwise, but proud of these guys uh, and, you know, how they were able to focus and, and do their jobs. It, it's just, we got a good group. All right, Kevin Wilds, what did Baker prove in his first game since OBJ's release? Oh, that quarterback wins matter that I've been saying my entire career. I'm a quarterback wins guy. <laughs> and guess what? I didn't hear any complaints in the post-game press conferences, Greg. And I know wide receivers need the ball, but here's Baker's targets. Three, two, 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 yeah. one, three, one, two. Jarvis had five and had three catches. Donovan Peoples-Jones led the Browns with 86 yards. He had two catches. There was no complaints. I feel like everyone, that Browns organization, little me, 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 well, not enough we, we, we. Not, not a urination thing, just we, like as a group. Sure. So overall, I thought it was a strong, I thought it was a strong performance from uh, Baker I and the Browns. I hope you have small children. Well, I do. You know I do. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was a strong performance from Baker. But again, I, I've said this all year. When we talk about the Browns, the Browns, Baker Mayfield, is, he's, he's a second option. Like, their running game is there first. So when you get Nick Chubb back, Baker, what do you need to do? Turn the ball and hand it off to Nick Chubb and let him do what it he works. does in this offensive line. It works. It That's takes right. all the pressure. It alleviates so much pressure off of Baker Mayfield. It is ridiculous. Look at what it caused them to do yesterday. And we talk about you talk about all the targets and spreading the ball around. He's not going down the field consistently. He's not trying to force the ball. Even Kevin Stefanski, as a play caller, can relax and just allow the game to unfold versus trying to figure out a way right. to get the ball to one of the best playmakers in the game when you actually can get it to him. While the Browns, I'm sure, are very happy with this performance and they're happy Odell wasn't there, you know who also is happy Odell wasn't there? Odell. Because if he's watching this game, he's like, yeah, that's not fun. Sorry. Baker completed six passes to wide receivers. Six. If you take out the six-yard bomb to Donovan Peoples-Jones, he had 52 yards passing to wide receivers. The story of that Browns game is Denzel Ward's pick six, the Bengals coming back down to earth, and Miles Garrett, my God, man, he has 12 sacks and 12 tackles for a loss this year. Leads the NFL in both. So it, to me, this was not really, a, this wasn't a Baker Mayfield vindication game. This was a Browns got back to winning the way they have previously, which is trust the running game, ask Baker to do very little, have the wide receivers be, you know, play bit parts. But if, if you think the Browns are going to need in years to come a number one receiver, they're not gonna get one in free agency. Because wh whether people wanna say Odell handled it poorly or not, other guys across the league see how the Browns play. And that doesn't seem fun for wide receivers. Even in a game where they score 40, the offense, passing-wise, does very little, and the little they do was not to wide receivers, aside from the one play Donovan Peoples-Jones. So I actually don't think Jenna Baker proved much. I think the Browns organization proved something. Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward yep. proved something. And the Bengals, the, the Bengals got to figure out who the hell they actually are. All of a sudden, Joe Burrow leads the league in interceptions. Thank you, Joe. Took that title from Patrick Mahomes. Again, Mahomes turned it around. And the Bengals went from their high moment to back to being the Bengals. Awful, awful quick, Jenna. AC, Packers Chiefs, Jordan Love starting in place of Aaron Rodgers and the quarterback struggled in his first NFL start. But the Chiefs were blitzing early. They were blitzing often. Love couldn't get the pack in the end zone till the fourth quarter. Matt LaFleur said after the game they didn't have a good enough game plan for the pressure. Said it falls on him for Love's performance. So Greg, put a grade on Jordan Love's performance in his first NFL start. I thought Jordan Love's performance deserves a C-minus, and I'm giving him a C-minus only because 
of the waning moments of that game, that fourth, fourth quarter performance that he started to kind of come out of his shell. And I thought that even Matt LaFleur started to allow him the opportunity to come out the shell. But when you look at what the Kansas City Chiefs were able to do, the most disrespectful thing to do to a quarterback is to just flat out blitz him. Because that's telling a quarterback, young or old, that, hey, we're coming after you. You better make a play. And with Jordan Love and that offensive line, they never were able to combat that with playmaking on the counterproductive side of things. And so a, a large part is that, of that is on Jordan Love. Now, he didn't look comfortable early in the game. He struggled getting Devontae Adams the ball, but I felt like at the waning moments, if I'm going to pull a Nick right, all of these negative things, <laughs> but then at the end of the game, at the end of the game, when they needed him to make a huge, crucial fourth down conversion, who are you going to get the ball to? You're going to get the ball to Devontae Adams. Everyone in the stadium, including everyone watching, knew that. They did that. But you then continue to compile the, the errant throws with an interception at the end to seal the game. Like Jordan Love, I was expecting so much more, not only from him, but from even Matt LaFleur, getting him out of the pocket, allowing him opportunities to at least use his legs and be free. But that didn't happen. And if I'm the Green Bay Packer fan base, I'm a little terrified because Devontae Adams is a free agent. I'm a little terrified. He, he didn't look excited. He didn't look like a guy that's yes. willing to come back if, if Aaron Rodgers is not under center next year and then you look at Aaron Rodgers you don't know what the relationship is with that so where do they go because Jordan Love is he the answer not after last night see Greg Greg tries to be a, a Packers optimist that's why he broke out the rarely used term a little terrified I think that means <laughs> a lot terrified if I'm giving this a, a letter grade Nick, I'm giving it an E. An E? Hey, pay attention, buddy. That's my take. You got to pay attention to a letter grade. You got to lock in, my oh, friend. No, I was I'm trying listening. to look up stats. I was checking uh, to, to, to say, no, you know what? You're looking up Chiefs defense stats. You're going to be like, oh, the Chiefs defense is actually pretty good. If I gave it a letter grade, I would give it an E for eh, not great. And if you want to talk about how good the work. Kansas City Chiefs defense, yeah, E for eh. E and then several That's H's. That's not what E's for. Uh, if you want to talk e about thing? the Kansas City Chiefs defense. I actually thought, and I don't know if this is something that like you can be mad at the defense, that they dropped too many interceptions. I think Jordan Love's stat line looks <laughs> much better because they were liter yeah. Tyron Matthew literally had balls going through his head. He could have had three yeah. interceptions, maybe more. Mm -hmm. So I, I strong eh for me. Yeah, I, by the way, Wilds, I apologize. I was listening to you. I just was checking my entire scholastic, you know, resume, which is quite good, if I may say so myself, to see if I ever got an E. But the answer is no, because oh, okay. that's not a thing. That's not a great. I'm I, with Greg almost I entirely. So. I gave him a D plus, which is just a tick below C minus. And the reason he didn't get an F was just because of the end. Jordan Love realized there is a great way to move the football. It's the single best way to move the football in the NFL. Look around the field and say, hey, yep. where's 49 for the Chiefs? Daniel Sorensen throwing it in. Uh -oh. That is, guys, <laughs> that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Sore spot. I hope he's Derek go. doesn't know that. He's just, got to go. Just, he's got to go. He, uh, listen, he forced the fumble against the Texans the year we won the Super Bowl in the playoff game that flipped the game. God love you, Daniel Sorensen. You'd be a Chiefs it. ambassador. You got to go. And by the way, if we're getting rid of people, <laughs> you know who also might have to go after that game? Brian Gutenkunz. He maybe should just tender his resignation. He's caused all this mayhem in, in Green Bay to draft that first guy? Listen, I understand it's his first start. I know it's his first start, Jenna. But he's been in the league a year and a half. And Troy Aikman almost jumped out of the booth. He was so frustrated. Troy was like Jordan. The thing is, when there's no one in the middle of the field, you know where you should throw? The middle, the middle of the field, yeah, Jordan. He's a first-round pick. Yeah. He's been in the league a year and a half. I give him a D 